Uh, uh, thank you very much, and I'm, I'm very happy to be here tonight on behalf of the regional group to strongly support the restoration of this bill to the committee stage of the 33rd Dáil. And I, I think it's really, really important that that happens, and, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, I, I think, first of all, that there's a huge amount of work that's already taken place, and the former senator, Porig Okeja, deserves a huge amount of credit from that, from that perspective. So loads of work has happened, and also there's been a considerable amount of stakeholder engagement. Um, he has liaised, for instance, with the, the Bar Council of Ireland, with the Irish Council for Civil Liberties, with GSOC, and, and, a, and a host of other uh, industry uh, representatives, for example, uh, is me as well. So uh, all that engagement would come to nothing unless we capitalise on it. Also, not only that, but there's been a huge amount of cross-party, not only support, but also cross-party agreement to advance this bill. And I think the only reason this bill is, is not already on the statute books is because of the premature and early dissolution of, of the previous stall. So I think we should seize this opportunity and capitalise on the work that has already taken place and advance this, this bill as soon as possible. The, the second reason I'm supporting this bill is that, that perjury is not a, a, a victimless crime. And there is a perception out there that it's somewhat harmless or it's just something that we do and we kind of turn a blind eye to it. But I don't think we can afford to do that anymore. Yes, the insurance industry was mentioned by, by Deputy Nocton, and I'm sure he'll also agree that this is not uh, pretending to be a panacea for the, the ills of the insurance industry, but it's going to focus on just one component, which is the perjury aspect. And, and that is a major issue when people exaggerate the personal injury claim, claims, and this will basically, hopefully, get them to think twice about it before they, they pursue that course of action. Um, but we always remember that it's not just about insurance claims, but there's, there's more serious offences and injuries out there also. For instance, we know people that uh, have committed burglaries uh, or assaults or, or sexual assaults who are walking free at the moment because they could find someone who could create a, a spurious alibi for them, and those people are now, now walking free. It also focuses on white-collar crime, which is very important, um, family law cases, but also tribunals of inquiry. There's been a number of tribunals over the last number of decades where senior business people, and indeed politicians, have lied under oath and have got away scot-free. And that's why it's also important that this is advanced and expedited. Um, also, the third thing I like about this bill is that there's an emphasis on deterrence rather than just punishment or penalties. And there is a grey area at the moment that Deputy Nocton uh, alluded to. And this bill will provide the clarity that is necessary that when people go into the stand or if they sign a sworn affidavit, that they are aware that if they perjure themselves, if they deliberately try to mislead the court's process, that there are consequences. Um, the fourth thing I like about this bill is there's balance to it. And, and there are safeguards included. So, for, for instance, you require more than just one person's word against another to be convicted of perjury. Also, not only do they get the little person who's inside the dock uh, perjuring themselves, but there's also an opportunity here to prosecute the person who incites that person to commit perjury. So not only do you get the little person, you also go after the big fish as well, which is very important. And also, crucially, there's an obligation not just on the person who's taking a personal injury claim to be truthful, but also the person that who is defending that claim. So there's an obligation on both parties to be honest and truthful. And finally, it's not just about insurance claims, it's about the core administration of justice in this country. And we are a, a rule of law country that when someone signs a sworn affidavit, or when someone gives oral evidence and oral testimony in a court of law, that we must be sure that that evidence is accurate and truthful and if there, that there are consequences for those who, who deliberately try to mislead the court's process. So, in summary, Cahirik, um, I'm very much in favour of this, um, this bill, and I would urge my colleagues in, in the Dáil to support it also.